Hey guys. So in the last video that we went over, we covered how to actually construct floors, um, ceilings, and uh, walls. Um, configuring all those through the interface um, so that you guys can customize them as you need to. But there's a couple other things that you need to be careful for um, when you're actually building things. Um, so, so far we've only used the, um, the tools basically in an enclosed space. But there is an important thing that I want to show you guys as far as um, actually building things. So, um, just like everything else, I'm going to go in, um, yeah, create a new, or open the existing template here. We'll let that load for a second. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to show you guys is how to actually put some of these together. And, um, just kind of go with me on this for a minute. So I'm gonna open up an elevation. We'll split this into tile views. I'll go right there. And so what I'm talking about specifically is how you actually join together walls, ceilings, and floors when you have more than a single level enclosed space. So I'm gonna grab, and I'm because I specifically wanna make sure we keep using something consistent here for these demos. I'm going to keep using this brick on CMU. Um, and so let's turn this up to so medium here, consistent colors. Okay. So I'll draw this out. Um, we'll do 20 foot just to keep this kind of big because I'm going to need some space here. Uh, we'll do 15 foot this way. Snap that there. Okay. So um, one of the issues that we have run into a lot is actually joining multiple floors together. So you can see right here, I have this space. Let me turn this one up too. Um, so we have this vertical space right here, um, and I'm just going to throw in some generics. So level one, um, actually, let me turn on a 3D view as well, and we'll tile this out. Um, except the 3D view, I'm going to do wireframe. Okay, so when I go to level one right here, I'm going to click and you can see it just placed that level one ceiling right there. I'll go to level two. I will come back here and do the same thing. Then I'll come back in with a floor and we'll draw the floor on level two. Yeah. This is good enough for a demo. So we'll do that for the floor for level two. Then we'll go back down to level one and we'll do a floor down here. Oh, I'm using a generic too. Um, all right, so I have a space now. It has what are basically two rooms here. You have a room on the ground floor, room on the second floor. But eventually you're going to need to join these spaces together, right? So if I throw a door here on level one, like that, uh, we need some way to get up to that second floor. So I'm going to throw some stairs in here. We'll cover stairs later um, in another demo, or actually just later in the semester. Um, so don't worry about this right now. Um, because we will get there um, eventually. Uh, let's see. Okay, but um, what I wanna show you guys is how this actually handles putting in these stairs. So if I, did I really get that that? No. Weird. Okay. Um, so let me switch these around. Move this over here. Move this. There you go. No. There we go. Okay. So what I want you guys to see is um, if I remove this wall right here, actually, I can just hide it. Uh, oh, no. So let me turn this back to that, and then why do I not 
not see it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, hide element. All right. So I've just hidden that wall that was right there. And now if we look at this, we can see that there's... Oh, I probably should have just done it from this angle. Um, whatever. What do we write? That's east. East elevate. No. West. Oh, it's not hidden in this view. Okay. Let's go east. And we'll hide it in here. Okay. Hide element. Okay, so now we have this. And we can see right here that um, you've got your ceiling for the ground floor. And then you've got the floor for your second floor right here. So you've got this space where your stairs cut through here. But when you look at this, there's actually not a hole here for anyone to kind of physically walk through. All right. So when you are doing, when you are building in stairs um, and connecting levels, which is what will be part of your milestone and then your next project as well, um, what you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to cut a space in here. Oh, this. Yeah. Um, you'll have to cut a space in here for people to actually kind of go up these stairs. Um, we did this in um, in SketchUp where we actually had to cut out a piece of the floor, but it's a little bit more complex in Revit. So what I'm going to do is I have this ceiling selected right here um, and I'm going to go to edit boundary. And so right now I'm on level one with my level one. Uh, let me just go back. So level one ceiling is right here. I have it selected, but you can't see it in the level one space right here. Oops, lost it. Oops, cancel. Okay. So here I can go to edit boundary when I have it selected. That'll let me actually edit the border for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw these lines with these line tools up here. Don't worry that this crashes right into that wall. So I'm just going to trace out this area here um, because I need to add some space for people to not like walk into a ceiling or bonk their heads as they're going up the stairs. So I'm just going to trace that for the ceiling for now. That's good enough as far as what we're doing in here. Um, so I'm going to do that to that, um, to that ceiling. I'll hit the check mark and you can see here now that we have, um, space for that ceiling to go or for people to walk up these stairs and pass through the ceiling, but we need to do the same thing to this floor that's right here. So again, I'm going to go to my level two now because this is the floor that's visible here, um, and where it's assigned to, and I'm going to go to edit boundary here and I'm going to repeat that same process. So I'm going to grab the line tool. I'll go right there and I'll just trace out this space right here. And then again, I'll use the split element um, little button right here. It's that this other one does with a gap. I don't want the gap. I just want to split it. Um, so we'll split that right there. We'll split that right there. Escape to get out of the tool and then just select each of those and hit delete. So now that we've done that, we can actually see that we have space to walk up the stairs. But we're left with another problem here, which is that there's this gap that's just kind of floating here between the two floors. So if you're going up the stairs, you'd be able to look through and see stuff. Um, and so to fix that, we're actually going to put a wall that goes right there. And so we'll use the existing tools in Revit to do that with. So what I'm going to do is, um, or at least the way that I do this, is I actually build it on the second floor and then lower it down um, because I can see where this floor is from the second floor. So I'm going to go create another wall. Um, I'm just I'm going to just use a default one for this, but you'll have to use one of the appropriate ones for your project. I'm going to do the finish or uh, the core face exterior for this. And so from level two, as I'm placing this, you can see that it's gonna overlap a little bit, but I'll be tracing along that space right there. Um, and I'm gonna bring this down around here and finish that off there. And then I don't need anything over there. So what I've done is a set, I've sort of just kind of created a wall that will fit in that space, but I've done it a level above. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna just, hold down control because um, because of course shift is going to be a deselect option in here you can see the little minus icon there if I hold down shift hold down control that's an additive select so I'll hold down control um, and add those together 
So now I'm actually going to move this down and um, I can either move this to level one and then once it's on level one you can see it goes up to level two and then I can do a base offset of eight feet and that uh, oops oh I see what I did wrong okay so I can move this down to level one and then set the top to up to level two so we basically just moved it down a floor and then base offset to eight feet um, and then usually if you take this down like just a half inch you get rid of that weird glitchy thing that's right oops that weird glitchy thing that's right there so if I do top offset a half inch oops oh my god um, oh, negative half inch. Um, you get rid of that glitchy effect right there and you still end up with a nice cut through. So you can see here that now we have, it's not a little, there we go, that's a little easier to see. So now we have this nice finished area here that covers up that gap between the floor and the, uh, between the ceiling of the floor below. Um, and let's actually do, Um, and then we'll do another uh, eight and a half inch here. And that'll fix that little spot right there too. Okay, so that's a real clean way to finish off that whole space right there. Um, and so if I was to actually include this in a model, I'd be able to go, okay, here's where this wall is. Um, we don't have a weird gap and this is more realistically how this space would be built. Um, for your uh, milestone and your project that you'll be working on, you'll also be required to put in railings. Um, but again, we'll do a separate video on stairs. They're kind of their own little deal. Um, but you would put railings along the second floor here to keep people from falling down. Um, an extension of this is the next thing I want to show you guys. So let's say that... Um, Let's say that, well, actually it's Revit, so why don't we just drag this wall out? Uh, okay. So Revit's smart enough to figure out that, hey, he just dragged this wall, let's re redraw the ceiling and the floor out to that space. So everything has just adjusted itself now. So there's a couple other things we have to take care of. We can't have an open roof right here that, like just the ceiling is exposed to the elements. So top floor, we'd have to create something else to cover that area. So I'm going to create another floor. So I have to go to my elevations right here. And I'm going to copy paste this up. Um, and we'll do this one another, where are we at 10 feet? We'll just keep it, do 10 feet, keep it consistent. Okay, so I have a floor up here now. Now I can place a floor on top of here. So if I go to... Let's see, view, plan views, floor plan, add another level three right here. Now it should appear here in my floor plan so I can use this. Um, let's keep this grouped right here. Nope, come back here. Um, now, when you add a new floor like that, you do run into one issue. There's nothing here, whereas at level two, we could see the undercut right there. So, um, let's see. the. We want to go down to the underlay right here. So the first option in the properties with this just clicked in this level three. Um, we have graphics as this first menu set, but the underlay is the second one. I want to change this base off or this base um, layer to level two, and now I can see here's my level two that I'm going to draw off of. Um, so that'll let me actually start working on top of here and correctly placing this next floor. Um, another trick I'm going to show you guys is um, offsets, which I haven't really covered yet. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to offset this. Um, I want to go negative, um, let's do 5 eighths of an inch. Oops. Oh my god, I can't type today. 5 eighths inch. Okay. So now when I start drawing this, if I, you can see that I clicked, let me zoom in more. I clicked right here. But instead of drawing it along that board, it, excuse me, 
instead of drawing along the border here, it's offsetting this 5 eighths of an inch off of there. So if I do this kind of exaggerated, if I do 5 inches, um, it'll draw it kind of really far off of there and I can hit space to reverse the side that it's offsetting to. Um, but I want to do negative 5 eighths inches, um, again just to kind of add a little bit of a lip um, to that. Okay, so we have that there. That would be sort of, if we were smart, it would be some kind of way that we could um, manage that space right there. Um, it would be some sort of outdoor, you know, if this was a walkable roof, basically, is what I'm getting at. I don't want to engineer that. I don't have time because of this video. Um, but that's how you would at least theoretically put that in there. Um, I'm also going to click on these sunglasses again, and I'm going to click Reset Temporary Hide Isolate. And that's going to let everything come back here so that we can see what this looks like on the outside. Um, and then I also want to come back through here, and I want to reset these walls. Right now, they're going, their top constraint is the unconnected 20 feet. So now that I have a level three, I can tell them to go up to level three. And then I can use my top offset to again do negative half inch. Um, just to again, clean that little space up right there so that we don't have the glitchy effects. All right, so, um, and we're still gonna get some of them, but at least in theory, if that if we take that to render, it won't be as bad. So the thing I wanted to do next here, and again, I'm just kind of working through different things that you guys are going to need to know for your milestone. Um, let's say that we have a actual kind of balcony sticking out right here. Okay, so I'll throw a door right here. Um, actually, let's load a family. We haven't done that yet. So I'll click on door. We'll load family, and. Ugh, give me a minute. Okay, well, I guess I'm stuck. Um, there should be more options here when I go to load families, um, but it looks like um, I don't have those, so I don't have the ability to import new stuff. So I will have to probably reinstall mine. Um, so I will have to get around to that later. Um, for this video, I guess just doing a single door here is fine, so we'll just put a door right here. And then what I want to do is I actually want to extend this floor out. So something I kind of showed you guys but didn't really go into was how you can select things that are kind of nested in here. So if I want to select this floor, um, I can hit tab right here and eventually you can see it'll cycle through stuff. Eventually it'll highlight that floor right there. I can click and now I'm working with that floor. So we'll go back in here, we'll edit boundary and I'm going to just kind of extend this out. I don't even particularly care. Um, it is gonna throw a warning right here, highlighted lines overlap, that's fine. I'm gonna have to come in and just kind of clear these out. And then again, trim unnecessary sections from here. So I've just edited that floor. Now we have this wall going, or this floor going through that wall and don't attach. Um, so now we have this space sticking out right here, um, but we still have to do kind of what I did to the other side here, or to what I, what I did to the interior. So um, I need to have some sort of area that's a treatment to the bottom of this, and then I have to have an exterior wall that covers that space up as well. So um, let's go to, again, I'll start at my level two. Um, and I'll follow that same process. I'm going to use the interior wall. Actually, no, I'm not. Uh, I, I mean, you w this wouldn't be necessarily the right wall to use, but I'll just use it. Um, and again, I'm going to use the core face exterior. Yeah, this isn't the best wall to be doing this with. Um, we'll do it anyway. Um, I should be using something that isn't as thick but we'll use that. All right, so, and it looks like I drew it backwards, so we'll have to just select these, hit spacebar, and flip them around. Um, next, I'm gonna lower it back down to level one, up to level two, and we're set here as far as the height. Base offset, eight foot, one half inch. 
and then another top offset of um, negative half inch. And that should just lower that down just enough so that we have that nice clean surface right there. Um, if I was feeling super OCD, I'd come and change this, but because technically there's a <laughs> air gap in here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of OCD I could do as far as getting this just for a demo though. What my main purpose of showing this to you guys is just to show you how you would build a structure um, like like a balcony of this sort. So um, next I'm gonna go back to my level one and now I have another issue here which is I can't see this th this space that's uh, technically above me. So with my level one selected here, I'm gonna go back to the, um, let's see. Oh, we'll just, yeah. We'll draw it again on level two. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, ceiling and I'm just gonna do a sketch ceiling instead. Um, and then again, we'll do 5 eighths of an inch on this, oh, negative 5 eighths. Oops, and there we go. Rectangle this out, just making sure, just zooming in enough to make sure that it's drawing it to the correct side. And then hit escape, and I'm just going to bump that up till that snaps right there. Hit OK, or the green check mark, and it's going to draw it on the floor above. I'm going to take it down to level one. And now we have something that covers up that gap underneath there. Um, these aren't necessarily like kind of appropriate materials to be using outside, but it's ones that I'm using for this um, without, like I said, going super OCD. Um, I will let my OCD come back in here and just do this. Uh, and then it's not going to like this. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't do negative five eighths. Zero. Nope, come on. CD is happy. Um, what? Oh, this got adjusted. Go right there. Okay. Always keep an eye out in that corner um, for those. Again, we're going to go with don't attach. There are certain times where you do, but we're not dealing with them right now. So um, that's how I would create something like that. Um, so Let's say, hypothetically, knowing what you guys are going to be doing for your next project, that you're going to have to do a series of spaces where you're going to have to create a bridge um, that spans different gaps. And you're probably going to have to use different walls and different floors and different ceilings for them. Um, so what you can do, just as a hint, really, as a hint, is you can copy something sometimes go here okay copy it right there and then we'll go to level two we'll paste it where does it want to go yeah that's fine um, so now if I was to take this thing that I just pasted in here where are we at oh we're at level three that's why we're so high up So if I was to take this and clean this up, edit the boundary, just fill that line in right there, and then just get rid of all these other line segments right here. Um, close that, don't attach, um, and then grab that. 
and delete that. Now, hypothetically, I have a bridge that I could then copy and paste to different places, um, at least somewhat relatively easily. So if I was to cut this out of here, I think it's going to go back to level three, but we'll see. No, I won't. So it's a level higher up. Interesting. Um, I don't like how that pasted. Uh, let's go to here. Okay. So, I... Uh, cancel. Oh, it wants to do temp levels. That, how'd that get in there? Oh, I copied, okay. I see what I did. I think I see what I did. Anyway, um... The point is, if you were to, say, theoretically copy something like this, it would make it really easy for you to quickly and easily build more things like this that theoretically your teacher might have you do in a follow-up project. So I would definitely, there we go, finish, oh, what is that? Why is that doing that? Oh, well, okay. So, um, let me see here. There's got it. I'll figure out something. Um, but anyway, so it might be handy for you guys to get ready to start building some things like this as a hint um, for your milestone. Um, and we will continue with uh, actually doing some other things in the next video. So I will see you guys in that one.